um, did a few sketches. I worked out the composition. I loved this dark behind his head here and the white and the, the black and then just all the colors just really seemed to work. But I loved um, the, just kind of working out some more of this no tan here. No tan is um, it's a Japanese word meaning the percentage and ratios of light to dark. And so that's what I have worked out here. And so you can do this with just a really strong dark charcoal pencil. And so, and no middle tones. So I have just sort of a blob represented by him with these strong angular, hold, hold it up close, strong angular lines marking out exactly where these darks are going to go in here. Okay, and then, um, and then just the lights. So that is what this is. So I'm keeping this right here by where I'm working. And then I also, which you can't really see on here, is just worked out some of the measurement ahead of time. Um, so in this sketch, it's not it's not perfect, but I did do already the measuring of how many heads high and and I did draw a plumb line on here and I added that on here. So I will talk you all through that as we get going. This this is going to be um, a multi -part, part series video and I just want you to know this video of this series is the most important one. I always say if you don't get the foundation right, Everything else you do to build on that is just, if it's not right, it's going to fall apart. So a lot of times the problems that we experience with paintings is not in the fine details, but it's in the beginning. It's all in the foundation. So we're going to work on getting those in place here and um, getting the no tan correct, the values, and um, the drawing. So that is our project for today. I'm going to take you along on this painting as we go through, and I think that I'm going to... Um, not really push this to a high polish because I love that rustic Tuscan texture of this wall and so we'll have some fun with that as we get closer towards the end and splattering and palette knife and whatever. So let's jump in. Um, I have, like I said at the beginning, this is just a 16 by 20 canvas. I've already put um, a thin coat of paint on it. Oh, and another thing I'm, I'm going to do with this painting is I'm only going to use three colors plus white. I'm going to use yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. I may incorporate a little tiny bit of other colors as we get closer to the end, but ultimately that's it for this painting. And then, of course, the white. Okay, so that's going to be kind of fun, too. Just the earth tone primary colors. And at this stage today, I'm not going to be using any... Um, linseed oil. I'm just going to use my Gamsol odorless mineral spirits and I get a lot of questions about medium and I you know I just try to keep everything as simple as possible. So um, you know I don't I, I've, I've run the gamut on Merge, Liquin, uh, Gal Kid, all those others and I like to just stick with what is in my paints in the beginning. So they're, they're made with linseed oil so I use linseed oil. Alright so today I'm just going to use a little bit of the Gamsol, and I'm, you can't see this really, but I'm not really not going to be showing my palette much because ultimately I'm just using these colors. So uh, for today, I, I'm just drawing it in. So burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, <laughs> and then also some Gamsol. So I'll be erasing. Paper towels are critical for this stage of the painting as well. Get some good paper towels, Vivas, uh, whatever, Bounty. Don't buy the cheap stuff. Um, all right, so. Now, I have my no tan here. I've already got my sketches. I pretty much know where he's going to live on this canvas. And um, so, given that, I know the distance where I want his head going. The first rule of composition is, are these four boundaries? Where are you going to put your objects so that the tension is not too great or too intense closer to the borders? So I want his head in about this area. I always figure out the highest height, the lowest, and the farthest left and right on my canvas first. So the top of his head I think would be nice if it was there. That gives a lot of room for air to flow around my subject. And um, if his foot comes down to about here, the bottom of his foot over here, I think that that would look about right in that realm. So then if the bench, I like how the bench shows, you know, just this open area, it kind of makes it feel inviting, like you just want to sit next to him and, you know, say, how's it going? Um, so I'm going to try to keep some of that open here 
and make it look inviting. So that means that the farthest over he's going to go is roughly about like that. So you can see I'm just making little marks in the beginning. And then, um, so if that's top, bottom, and side, then the rest of them is going to fit sort of within this window frame. This foot will be in this sort of area. So very loosely, I'm just holding my brush. You can see I'm just holding it really loose. This is just a size uh, 2 filbert or something like that, uh, just to keep it uh, loose. That's all I'm going to be using today, pretty much. I, I figure that, that today's video will probably only run, I'm going to try to keep these about an hour. Um, so this is kind of about in that area. That means that, kind of like this bench over here, and his hand will be, his hand is kind of about in the middle of the canvas, but I think I'm going to just go with it because the real center of interest is right in his face. And I like sort of that two-thirds division. This one-third here and about two-thirds towards the top. So that's about where my center of interest is going to sit right there. Okay, so I hope that that kind of makes sense with the composition. Now I'm going to just sort of map in where I saw the that notan. Oh, notan is a Japanese word and it just simply means your percent ratio of dark to light and you want it to be a harmonious and interesting balance. And so that's what I've worked out there. And I thought that it was kind of interesting. Sort of had that yin yang, a little bit here, a little bit here, into that balance that way. So I want to be careful not to split this right in half. That still allows for all of the space to have that really interesting texture. And then, um, the window comes back here behind his back. So this is all, this will all be interesting window paints. I don't know how much of those white lines I'm gonna do in there because I think it kind of breaks up that grid. I might just subtly suggest it, but um, okay, so I like where that's going. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is on the little sketch that I'd already done, I already mapped out how many heads tall he is. So I'm gonna show you how I did that on here. On this drawing, or on, excuse me, on this photograph, Look I just, it. my brush, and I slide my thumb up and down, and I'm gonna put the tip of the brush on his chin, and the tip of my thumb on the top of his hat. Okay, so that gives me the mark for one head. Okay, now I'm gonna come down, and I already did this with a pencil on here, but you can do it with your brush. Um, if you have a valuable photo, just put it in a plastic sleeve. So I'm gonna mark down then the second head, and that's about where his shirt makes a crinkle fold right in there. And then, um, um. And then the third head down, from I put my thumb right on the bottom of that mark there, and I go down, and it's about to his thigh there. And then I'm gonna do another head down, and I, it's about where the foot of that bench is. And then one more down from there, and it's about the bottom of that foot, that heel right there. So I don't need to keep going because I know how many that is. So what I'm gonna do on my canvas is because I'm not making that the same size, I'm gonna make this head the size that I feel is appropriate, okay? So if I decided that that's about where it's gonna be at the top and this is the bottom, breaking it down, knowing it's gonna be about, what did I say, one, two, three, four, five heads tall, then Let's just guess. Let's say I make his head that big. Okay, so do I have enough room to make it fit on here? So let's see. If I make his head that tall, that's one, two, three, four, five. And that would mean that that's about where his heel is and the bottom of his foot's gonna be there. And I'll tell you that, that was really lucky. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work out that smooth, but there we go. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is because I figured out those divisions, I already have them on here, I'm gonna draw them on here. So I'm just gonna make a nice horizontal. It's important that you get it as horizontal as you can. You know, you can lock your finger on the edge of your canvas, lock it in, 
Lock your fingers in place on your brush and just slide it across. If it's crooked, then that's going to be crooked and you're going to be off a little. Um, so a lot of this technique here that I'm teaching, I learned this at the atelier when I went to the classical school. We'd have our live models set up before us and then um, we would map out the plumb line, we'd divide our model in half and then we'd draw the plumb line on our paper and then we'd start marking down the heads and key places where those marks are. It's not really a grid because a grid is a perfect square like that window back there. Um, so you have just major divisions and I call them helper lines. You just draw them straight across. If your model was right here, you could hold your brush up and draw a line visually straight across to figure out where the head was, where the chin was, and so forth. We don't have that, so I'm just going to use that. All right. So these are my horizontal helper lines as such. And now I'm going to drop down a plumb line. I already drew a plumb line on him, and I did it right on the edge of his face and straight down because I saw that it was going to hit pretty key places, like it's very close to his heel. And if I can get the edge of his face in relation to the edge of his heel correct, a lot of these other things are going to help fall into place. So I know that I want his face in this area because I gave myself a circle. So that being the case, I'm going to give myself a plumb line on this side of my circle. And I'm going to lock my pinky on the edge of the canvas like this and locking my fingers in place on the brush, just going to go straight down. As long as I don't wiggle all over the place. <laughs> so that's how you can get a nice straight line. Okay, so there's my plumb line and there it is right there. Now it's simply a matter of kind of like grid work now where you fill in what's in this square, what's in that square and so forth. Um, okay, so let's get into what I'm going to do now is holding my brush loosely again, just going to go in and start figuring out if this is that where the oops, plumb line cut his face sort of right about there. That means the chin is going to go there, the hat about there. You can always make adjustments, but right now in the beginning, um, there, I'm just sort of loosely laying things in. And that's why I love doing it with the brush. brush instead of a pencil, because it's so much easier to move around. I, I can just wipe things out, dip it in terps, wipe it off, whatever. And I did already work out some of the stuff in pencil on paper, so, you know. If you get your head in the game ahead of time, it just makes things so much easier. So I'm looking now, under his chin, there is a line because that's my dividing line. And right below there, his shoulder starts about, I don't know, about that far down. You can always make adjustments later. And then, um, I'm looking on the plumb line to see where major things are interrupting that plumb line. So that's that shoulder, the far distant shoulder. And then, um, what happens at this intersection? That's, I see a shirt right there coming down. His vest over here. Always looking for straight lines. Straight, angular, strong lines will give you um, a much stronger feeling to your painting, more structural. And um, one thing you don't want to do is just start getting really swoopy, swoopy, curvy, loopy, and it just starts looking really weak. So just keep your lines straight, committed, and take your time. There's no hurry here. Like I said at the beginning, this is the most important step if you're going to follow along in this series. Phase one of every painting is the most important part. I seriously, I cannot have music that has words on. Um, it just, it, I have to have complete concentration. So forgive me if this looks <laughs> loopy at some point because I'm working both left and right brain to communicate and try to get this down. But see, before I went on the air, I did all my intuitive 
so I, I figured I might be able to talk better if I already worked that out. <laughs> so I'm looking too to see that his vest comes over here and where it intersects. Um, but I'm just looking to see where it intersects the helper lines. All right, so now this line, where did I say? This is that one, this is under his thigh, right about here, where does the plumb line intersect? I've got about a triangle space of his leg under that, right there. So that is where that is. And then I can even just take my brush over here and I wanna see where his back goes, where if I hold it straight up and down in relation to his head, where does this horizontal line, I'm sorry, vertical line, hit the back of his head? And then when I do this, I'm looking at this line right here and I'm looking at the negative space created behind his head and in between this vertical line. So holding that straight up, it looks like Indiana. <laughs> so if I come over here and I know that that's about the bottom and I hold this up about like that, I'll make a mark and I know that I can fit the state of Indiana in this area. I always look for those abstract shapes created by negative space. And so that's kind of in this area and then that gives me the relationship for like how wide his head is going to be in there. Okay, so here we go, moving on. I like the trapezius muscle here as it comes down behind his neck, shoulder, and then it comes sort of pretty much straight down, but it kind of angles in a little bit, out, and then down. So we're working on this <laughs> just a little bit at a time. And then his thigh, the top of his thigh right here, creates a triangle from that helper line. His knee comes right, uh, right about, where are we at? Yep, right about there. I think that that might be a little bit high, so let's go down. Doesn't, it doesn't pay to rush this time, so if you see me, I'm, I'm pausing in between brush strokes, that's what I'm doing. I'm just thinking about everywhere I want these to go. And I'm flicking my eye back and forth all the time from what I'm doing here to um, my model over there, my image. What I liked about this image too, as I was getting going on this, is all of the ways that the darks are connected. So if you can even see on my picture here, um, if you look at my picture here, this dark window here connects to the darkness of his vest. And if you squint way down, it connects to the darkness of this um, leg shape, which connects to this leg shape and the shadow underneath the bench. And then this foot has this nice connection from the leg, it's kind of sticking out. Oh, you can't really see that well. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's sticking out that way, which has a, this lovely balance. And then it just is a slight jump over to the shadow of this bench. So I like all that. And, and then this um, arm shadow connects to the bench, connects to the, va or the vest over here, to his scarf around his neck and the facial hair, everything has this marvelous connection. And I'm always looking for ways that I can connect those darks and or lights. Um, it just has more of that cohesive feel. I heard one instructor describe it as if all of your darks and or lights were fenced in and you had cattle, could they roam from pasture to pasture? And that's what you wanna think about, allowing those cattle to roam from all your darks as such, okay? So, I think you can still see if I angle it. Sure, maybe I'll angle it a little bit back that way. Okay. Okay, so, um, I have this structure here down. Oh, feeling good about this overall angle. The back of his head, I want to make sure, has this angle going back. And his face has sort of this angle going back that way. All right. Is 
test. And then I'm looking at where this line hits and there's the bench in here. And then right about, okay, so his scarf comes like this. Right about in this vicinity, his arm comes over. And I'm looking at his knee. And if I draw a line straight up from his knee, where does it hit that arm? It's almost in the elbow. So if I determined that his knee was here, then his elbow is right about above it. But I need to check that distance. So what I can do, what I can do is, since I've decided that my head is what I call truth, um, everything else is going to hinge on that as my center relationship. So if this is this distance on here, then how far over, how many heads over is that arm going out? So I'm going to come over here and get this measurement that I have accepted on my painting. So there it is. Coming over here, how many heads over, it's hard to do this, <laughs> how many heads over is that hand going out? So there's one about where that brick is, and about one and a half, woo, one and a half, sky's falling. <laughs> um, okay, so it's about one and a half, so let's do that over here. So here's my head, and then the hand, come, the arm is one and a half, so there's one, just make a mark with my brush. And that's two, so his hand is going to be about at the halfway mark, okay? <laughs> so we'll just kind of suggest where that's going to live on there, and the hand will be in there. And that is all for now. I don't need to get into a lot of detail with that. All right, so getting the gesture, I hope that you can sort of start to feel that it's looking like it's going to be something, <laughs> like it's making sense. Just want to get some of that hat structure in there. It comes up. And you can clean your brush off in the Gamsol and just kind of wipe it down. Like that. Just, I just needed that little bit of a light up there on his hat just to help me with that. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so um, feeling good about the rest of this. His vest comes down like this. Once I get the drawing pretty much in place, then I start in on um, getting more of the values accurate. For now, this is the cr uh, really critical stage that I get this in place, the proportions correct. So let's get going on the legs and the lower portion. Um, I thought I figured out how many light heads over. Okay, so I, apparently I didn't. What you can do is take your head, because that's our truth, and I'm gonna go from the plumb line measuring out how many heads over the tip of that foot is. Okay, so coming over here, here's my head. Going back to that measurement, that's truth. All right, coming over here to the plumb line, and I'll just go, I'm gonna go right to this intersection where the helper line meets the plumb line. So there's one, two, about two and a quarter, two and a half, okay? <laughs> so here's my head, and I was gonna go right to this intersection on here. So there's one, two, and it was about a two and a quarter. All right, so that's, the framework of where that foot is gonna, foot and leg is gonna fit in. Okay, so this was my helper line that I went from, that intersection there. And so his foot, here it is on here. You can kind of see it, oh God, in place. Okay, so that creates um, this shape. I don't have a state that that shape looks like, but it's about, I'm drawing the negative space created by that. <laughs> All right, so let's get this foot in. The leg comes down. And then 
his knee, looking at this knee on the bottom leg, it's almost directly below his hand. So his hand is, we determined, is about there. So the other knee would be about like that. And then um, this comes back under that leg there. This creates a triangle. And then the bottom part of the knee underneath is just about that way. And then angles back. So I'm looking at this negative space under his leg, in between his leg and the plumb line. I know it's really hard to see that, you probably can't, but um, you can see it on here. So there's the plumb line, and then this negative shape comes back like that. And his foot angles downward, just like that. And I'm gonna draw a line straight up from this toe to see where it hits his knee, okay? So here's his knee, and drawing my brush straight up, that's about where the tip of his foot is gonna be. All right. So that comes like that. Let's put that back under there. And then his pants make that a little bit of a shadow. And the foot over here, again, looking at that negative space behind this leg, that back there, and see what shape that creates. And it comes about like that. Well, the, I love the shape of this foot. It, it has this wonderful angle up and then an angle back this way. And then the heel is almost horizontal. And then the top the, of the foot like that has this angle this way and the light is catching the inside toe part over there. So I'm going to clean my brush off and just sort of erase some of that there to create that effect. All right. So I'm content with the structure of this. What I'm going to do now, well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna get some of the bench in place so that I can move forward with some of the values. I'm looking to see where the lines intersect his leg, right in that area there. And it's about where that calf starts. And where does it hit the plumb line? Okay. It's interesting, you can really get these angles off a little bit, so you really wanna just double check where it hits all of your guidelines. And then the, where did this come from? The bench top, where his arm is resting, it's about like in that place. And then it comes behind his back. If you're just joining too, I, all I'm using for this, pretty much this entire painting is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and that's it. A little bit of yellow ochre. I will eventually be using a little bit of white, but not much. Uh, let's just, let me get this whole area a mess. Um, when I toned this canvas, I, I had mentioned at the beginning here, I splattered, I went like that with some of the turpentine and some paint and I let it drizzle and do some interesting texture because I knew that some of this was going to be showing through. I wasn't gonna paint over the whole thing entirely. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because there are parts and passages here where I'm gonna leave them just open. Did you draw all the half lines on your photograph too? Yep, I did. No, they're there. I drew them with the pencil before I began the video and um, so they are in place. You can do it. If you just print these off on your computer, your photos, um, then you feel comfortable writing, drawing all over them. But if it's something special, of course, obviously just get a, a plastic sleeve. and you could, Then you can get a grease pencil and draw on there. Uh, 
Okay. All right, I'm going to switch to a little bit bigger brush. This is a size, um, well, it's a size five flat. And I'm gonna go in now and start mapping in some of these larger pieces of my tan, as I had mentioned at the beginning. I'm not gonna go that black dark, but I am going to map out exactly where I want those darker passages. Um, maybe I'll just set it there. I think, you, yeah, you can still see it. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's get in. I don't feel that it's necessary at this point to really get fussy about his face and uh, some of that information there because right now there's so many more, so much more essential information that I need to get in place than the funny little details of the angles and all that, which I already worked that out on my drawing up here anyway, the likeness. Um, and so I will get into some of that later as we move through the painting. And then I think I'm going to just soften this edge on this side of his face a little bit too. Because I really like how that frame of that window behind him just really sets his face off. And that's just it was kind of just a lucky shot. <laughs> we, we were in Tuscany, and um, this is Daniel Hill Real. He'd sat down on this bench, and seriously, he did not pose. It was just all natural, and so I grabbed the shot, and it looked really great. So. And then in June, we're excited to go back again. This time, we'll be co-teaching. Daniel is extremely talented with all kinds of things, portraits, um, landscapes, architecture, buildings. And, um, so, and he's ex just really good with people. I, a lot of you have um, been calling uh, us Renaissance Creative Arts and have had the opportunity to speak with some of us, Dan or I, and so. We're happy to talk and help people. And, um, so anyway, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm kind of just content with where that is. I'm going to go through here now and just with um, paper towel in hand, wiping off my brush, just going to go in and lift out or lay down a thin value where I see a little bit darker tone. I'm squinting at the painting. Let's get that vest nice and dark. Not too dark though, I don't want to completely lose the structure. But again, I'm thinking about connecting all of my darks in here. So this has the strong shape. And in fact, it's lighter behind him. So I just don't want to lose that structure that I worked hard to get. So I'm wiping some of that up not go nuts there. <laughs> so, um, the vest comes down like this. Oops, that's brown. I don't want brown. Here we go. Strong color. And that's ultramarine blue. All right, and then I'm gonna, maybe I'll just grab a little bit of yellow ochre into this and start glazing or scumbling on loosely where some of these shadows are on his legs. Like this. So if you'd like more information on our workshop in Tuscany, you can go to Tuscany in the Frame. I know that there are still spots available, and so we're very excited about that. If you're not sure or you feel that, you know, maybe you're not ready to take a workshop like that, we have a lot of videos. Well, we have a number of videos. And the one we just released on painting the portrait is a really, really great one to start with. It's, um, I go into all of this kind of measuring and things like that to help you out <laughs> at Renaissance Creative Arts.
Facebook.com. And I, you know, between Dan and I, we like to help people as much as possible. So we, we will meet you wherever you are. These classes are not just for advanced, you know, come as you are. <laughs> I'm just putting a thin color on that just to help kind of push that bench part back a little bit. So getting under his thigh over here. And the crinkles and the pants. I really just want to start feeling some of that structure coming through with the value. Trying to keep the value as accurate as possible. And if you squint down at your image, you have an easier time catching the exact value that you see it as. Even on a photograph. <laughs> And this leg here, this, this lower leg, is pretty much in light. It's just getting all that sunlight there. So I'm not going to put, I'm going to let the middle tone of the canvas just create that effect there. And then, pretty soon here, I'm going to start wiping out areas where I want white. Under the bench here, that's part of my no tan here. You can see it on here. I want a little bit more of that darker shadow. So. I am using a little bit of Gamsol uh, just to lay down my values here. It's definitely not a painting medium. For my painting medium, I choose to use linseed oil. But uh, for today, just to lay in my drawing, it's totally acceptable to just use Gamsol or your odorless mineral spirits, turpentine, whatever you use. <laughs> so nice of you guys to join me today. Well, I don't know, some parts of the country it's kind of cold and yucky. Get a value on here. And I'm just going to let this kind of fade off. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with that, so let's just let that live there in ambiguity. What I like about this and what I really want to see happen is, is to create this feeling of his thoughts. These are all his thoughts and, and just this, I love that, that open rustic area and an open bench here, it just to me is very poetic. So I'm going to put that in just really quick. Um, and you know, in one of my videos, the Triquanda Bell Tower, I talk a lot about perspective in a landscape that one point, two point, I, I don't go into all of that. What I do when I'm doing um, the, the different perspectives with buildings, or in this case, this bench back here, I'll turn it so you can see it a little better. Um, it's, I, I want to capture that, those negative spaces and, and everything again. Same way I did his drawing, that's all I'm gonna do, and that's how I do perspectives. You know, you got your helper lines, plumb lines, break things in half, whatever you have to do, just look at negative spaces and, um, and to me it just makes it easier. <laughs> and I like this as part of my plan for the no tan down here. You can see there's a little spot over there and I thought that that had a very interesting yin yang sort of balance. And again, that, I love that poetry of just an empty bench. And he's kind of looking that way. And you can let your mind fill in the blanks. So that is the value for that. I didn't want to, I don't want to get too fussy into working on that, just just to suggest for now. I'll get back into more of that later, but you get the idea of where I'm going with that passage over there. Okay. And I'm looking, I'm looking at these bricks over here on this paint, this photograph, and I'm thinking about Vermeer and some of those old brick buildings that he's done, and I kind of want to 
try to get that. Yeah, this is gonna be a fun one. And like I said at the beginning, this is the most important phase of this entire painting. So um, it's gonna be, this is gonna be a great series. And I haven't done a series in a long time. So I'm excited to start a new one. And um, so that is, that's sufficient for as far as I'm concerned with that. What I like about this is that this leg of this bench is brighter than this leg. And you can see that over here too. This is a little bit more intense than that. And that just, it's, that's movement of light as we move away from our center of interest too. It just um, coincidentally did that, but I love that. And so I'm gonna keep that mood going. And when I paint this background here too, I'm gonna push that even further. So here's him, here's his thoughts and all this rich textural paint, cool and warms varieties and all that. And let it just fade away into nothing. So that's what I'm gonna do there. All right, so question is, is have we gotten far enough for day one? Let's see, I've been going about 45 minutes. Um, I think I'm not gonna work on this when I'm not doing a live video. And I don't know if I'm gonna do these every Saturday or if I'm gonna do this more than once a week. Maybe I'll, you know, join you again on Tuesday or I don't know, whatever. So we'll just play this by ear. But um, so I'm just going through here. Oh, one thing I was gonna do before I forget, clean my brush off. And I'm gonna start lifting out some of that white, the white of the, well, the paint. Cleaning this way. You can rub it back and forth like this to show more of the white of the canvas. So I'm just gonna take my paper towel, roll it up like this, nice and tight and wipe out where I want the white to show through. I think I'll get a smaller brush that I can control it a little better. Okay, so his arm has a nice highlight on it. Cleaning that off. This is, to me, this is where it really starts to come alive because you can start to see where the three va distinct values. We already have our medium. We've been laying down the dark, and now we're gonna play with the light. I can't wait to get that hand, too. It's just so beautiful. Dan has these fabulous hands. And that's, I, I mentioned that I was gonna do a video coming up here soon about, <laughs> Um, I'm going to do a video soon about just painting hands. And I'm going to see if I can talk Dan into modeling for me. He's got these really expressive hands. So let's see if I can do that. But I think that, you know, there's a lot to, you can say about painting hands. As humans, we're very sensitive to them. When we see them in paintings, they do a lot to convey mood and emotion. It's going to be really tempting to work on this <laughs> during the our time off. So I may uh, I may not be able to handle it, and I'll have to come on more than once a week. You know, I just I can't handle seeing it in a rough state. To get more of this down here. And I love this technique of laying on the paint and then wiping some off. It's not really grisaille, um, it's just, I don't know, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> In fact, there's so, so much about the anatomy that is fascinating, and I would love to do not just the hands, but the feet, and 
backs and ears and I think I've been reluctant to do portraits probably for years because there's just so much to say but you know I did the portrait video and um, I really enjoyed that and writing the book on it uh, a lot of you are buying that and I just I really appreciate it I'm so grateful just thank you guys so much for um, those of you who've purchased it I, we're getting incredible feedback I'm very enormously um, humbled by your response and um, Anyway, there's so much to say about portraits. That's just lesson one. We're going to get into all kinds of other lessons. And like I said, hands, feet, backs, um, hair, clothes, fabric, skin tones. You could just do one video alone on skin tones. There's so many things to say about it and different colors you can use. I keep these les lessons really, really simple with just, this is basically my plein air palette. Um, and so, when it, I mean, if I were to really get into it, I would love to demonstrate more with all kinds of different colors uh, in mixing skin tones and so forth. But in the end, at the end of the day, it's always best to keep things simple, you know. Um, it ha your paintings have a stronger sense of unity if you can um, just keep it quiet, keep it unified. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I am just going to do these three colors. Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, and Yellow Ochre for this entire painting. A little bit of white. It's possible that I may squeeze in some Alizarin Crimson into some of this or whatever, but ultimately for all of this, that's just all it's going to be. I know I didn't say I was going to talk about edges much, but his knee right here pretty much is a lost edge, so I kind of just wiped that out. Um, so I'll put that right back a little bit. Okay. So, mid tracks today. I just can't handle this. I, I'm going to put a little bit in of his face. Um, just make a little bit of a soupy mixture here. And drawing this back in place, let's go his hat, brim, like this, comes up. It's probably a little bit hard to see. Um, rubbing that out just a little so that it's easier to see or more visible. The top, the brim of the hat. If you don't get these hats, the shape just right, that they won't look like they're sitting on the head. They'll look out of place or whatever, so it's important to get these hats. Anyway, I'm sure I'll come back and tweak it quite a bit. Um, I want to get the value here in place. Uh, he's got this great facial hair that comes around. Hat is framing the face. That's getting too dark, too much blue. You can get too much um, ultramarine blue in your mixture and it just, it'll get too blackish and it's really difficult to lighten it. So just beware of that. Okay, back to, back to um, the shape here of his head and the facial hair comes down his ear right about in there and then the facial hair comes this way when I get working on his face more when I do this video and I'm uh, that that phase of the painting where I'm doing his face I will have the camera much closer I think you'd rather be able to see what I'm doing <laughs> so that works for that and then his whole eye passage is in shadow and then his nose. Let's just get that in place. <laughs> I appreciate you being out there and your support. Um, and his, let's get 
a little bit of this scarf in there. It just comes around like that. Back of his neck. I'm just gonna lose that side of the face altogether. Well, that's sufficient for now. Um, I th and let's get a little bit of his hand in place too. And this, I did work this hand out a little bit on the sketch there. And it comes down like that, just a little. His other arm is on his lap over here. Things like that. Okay. Well, I think that that is sufficient for day one. And that's about, what am I, yep, about an hour or so. And you wanna, when you're working on your own work, you wanna be able to stop at a place where it makes sense. Um, in this context, knowing that the next time I come back to this, the paint's gonna be dry and I won't be able to wipe it out. So I, I need to just make extra sure that where I stop, um, I'm not gonna need to wipe any more out. So that's kind of what I'm doing at this moment. I'm making sure that this is all a good stopping place. So it sounds like this. And I do see a little bit of the vest coming here behind him. Just double checking this entire passage's contour as it comes around. Just want to see where everything falls into place and make sure that I get this really natural, comfortable, casual look that he has here. So what I'm doing too is I'm just double checking with my mind's eye uh, where this falls in line with that and so forth. Anyway, what you'll get to see is, is all the different corrections and things that I fix along the way and how one goes about doing that. So we're going to cover a lot of this, this stuff when we're in Tuscany too, um, just working out the figure in the landscape. So if you're interested in more information on that, we will be posting more on our website, but um, Raphael with uh, Tuscany in the frame. We'll have more on that too. All right. All right. Well, that wraps it up. I wanted to thank you for joining me for part one of painting the figure. Um, this is going to be a really interesting series. I'll have a, a, quite a few videos in this set. Um, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe and click the little uh, picture of me down below and hit subscribe. You can always uh, click the little bell um, just to be notified whenever a new video comes up. And again, it's renaissancecreativearts.com if you want to see any of the new things that we're offering. All right, thanks so much, guys. Happy painting.